Hi guys! Today we are coding a Valentine's Day website for complete beginners, so we're not going to do any of that complicated VS Code, GitHub, terminal setup stuff. It's all going to be done through Replit, an online coding tool, and coding can seem really daunting at first, and I gave up many, many times when I first started coding. I gave up as soon as there was a bug in my code, I just threw away my entire project. No, 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 no. Because I felt like all the coders that I see in real life are like all fang engineers and they're all just... But everybody starts somewhere. The feeling of mediocrity is what comes before growth. And so we can do this and we're gonna get started. So head into Replit, make an account if you haven't already. We're gonna go to templates and then websites. And we're making an HTML and CSS website today. We'll save JavaScript for a different day. You'll just hit remix template. We'll type in the name of our website, keep it public, and then we're gonna hit use template at the bottom. I'm just gonna X out of the assistant over there. And if you open up the files in the corner, you'll see that Replit actually sets up a lot of the workspace for us. And so I'm just gonna click into index.html first to build out the skeleton of our website. And so your HTML file is where you actually build out the content that will be displayed on your website. And I'll break down all of this stuff over here. Doctype HTML tells the computer that this is an HTML document. And the HTML tag underneath wraps up all the content on the page. The head is what contains the brains of the website, it has all the metadata. It usually has code that allows the website to be viewed on different devices, it has the title which appears at the top of the, the tab over there, and then it also links the style CSS sheet which tells the computer that this CSS file is going to be accessorizing this HTML file. So I'll just go ahead and type in the title that I want to show up at the top of the browser. And now that we've set up the head, we can move into the body. I'm just going to delete the hello world. And if you haven't already noticed the HTML syntax, aka the way we write the code in HTML, you'll see that everything has an opening tag and an ending tag like a sandwich. And everything is enclosed in brackets. So the body is where we're going to put all the text and images that will show up on the web page. So I'm going to start out writing the title of my website. H1 stands for heading 1. And there's H1, H2, H3, H4. It just keeps going down. And as the number gets bigger, the heading gets smaller. So I'll just write, will you be my valentine? And underneath, I'm going to put an image. And HTML images are one of the only tags that don't need an ending tag. So it doesn't have to be sandwiched. And I'm going to go over to Pinterest to get my picture. Oops, and I'll just type in what I want and then I'll browse until I find what I like. And so now that I found my photo, I'll just right click, download the image, and you'll see it go into the corner. We're going to go back to our coding workspace and we're going to drag and drop that into our files. And for organization and accessibility purposes, we're going to rename that. So I'm just going to name it Cats in Love so I know immediately what image it is. And so now that we've named it, we can go back to the HTML file and put in that file name in quotation marks exactly as it's written on the side over there. So catsinlove.jpg. And so I'm also going to add a class which is just giving that image a special name. So when we style this image in CSS, the CSS file will know exactly which image we're styling. And so over here, I'm creating a div, which is just a container, and it's going to hold the two buttons, yes or no. The reason I'm lumping these together is because I want them to be styled the same way in the CSS file. And so this A tag just stands for anchor, aka link tag. And so when the viewer clicks yes or no, with this anchor tag, it's going to direct them to a new page, which is why we're creating these new HTML files. The href just tells the computer where to take the viewer after they click that anchor tag. And so I'll just create those new files in the corner. And because these are both HTML files on the same website, we'll have to copy and paste the same heading from the main page. And so to view our progress, I'm going to run our code by hitting the big green button at the top. And that's just going to compile and show us what it's looking like. Right now you can see that it's just really the bare bones, so we're going to head over to CSS to accessorize a little bit. Here we're going to style all the individual components of the website, so I'll just start off with the heading. The first thing that I want to do is change the color of the heading, so I'm going to head over to this website I've been using to find some new colors. And so once I find a color that I like, I'll just click on it and I'll copy it and I'll paste that into the workspace. 
when you paste it, it's only going to put in the letters and numbers, so make sure you put in the hashtag. And so now I'll move into customizing the body tag, which styles everything in that body tag sandwich. So I'm going to find a new background color and copy and paste it the same way. So now I'm going to run it again to update my progress and oh actually the contrast is not good on that but it's okay we'll, we'll fix that. I'm going to do text align center to put that heading in the center. Booyah! And here you'll see that CSS syntax is characterized by curly braces and also every line of the code ends with a semicolon. And so what I'm doing here is I've clicked on the color square so that I can change the shade of the color. Okay now the contrast is a little bit better. So now I'm going to move on to styling the image, but because it's part of a class, we have to start it with a period. So I wrote dot cat, and I'm going to make the picture a little bit smaller by setting the max width to 200 pixels. And typing height auto just makes sure that the height auto adjusts to the width. To put my image in the center, I'm going to write these three lines of code, display block, margin left, and margin right auto. So this is going to place it right in the center. And now that I like my image, I'm going to move on to my answer buttons, which right now are those blue links at the bottom. And because this is part of a class, we'll also start this with a period. And I'm just going to put these in the center with another text align. And so to put some space between the buttons, I'm just going to do word spacing of 20 pixels. And so right now, to be more specific, we're actually styling the div container of answer buttons, which means that we're really just styling the formatting of the buttons right now rather than the buttons themselves. To style the actual buttons, we have to go back to the index file, give the anchor tags below a class. So I'm just going to write links. And so if you're a little bit confused between the class of links and answer buttons, you can think about this as the class of answer buttons being a box of donuts that you would order. Styling answer buttons is the same as deciding what order you want the donuts to be in, whether you want them to be stacked, whether you want me to be sideways, etc. And then styling links is the same as which kinds of donuts you want. Do you want sprinkles? Do you want chocolate? Etc. And now that we've created a class for the links, we can go ahead and style those buttons. So you'll just see that I got rid of the text decoration at the bottom, aka the blue underline of those links. And I'm going to make the color the same as the header. And to make them look like actual buttons, I'm going to add some padding around the links. And adding padding is basically like adding pillows and adding a little bit of cushion around the buttons. So the first number is the width and the second number is the height. I'm also going to add a border for the buttons. And the first number is how thick you want the border to be. The second is the style of the border. And the third is the color. I'm going to add a border radius to soften the edges of the button a little bit because I don't want it to look like a strict square. And the higher that number is, the more rounded those edges will become. I'm also going to add a background color for the button. And if you're a little bit confused by the color and background color lines of code, color applies to the text color of the button, the yes or no, and the background color applies to the overall color of the button. And so I'm going to use this pale dogwood color, so I'm just going to copy the code and paste it like we did before. And when we hit run, we'll see all those changes and you'll see that it looks more like a real button. And you can also see a little bit of overlap between the buttons in the picture. If you want those to be separate, go to answer buttons and then add padding dash top and then you can add the pixels. I also want to add a hover feature for when the cursor hovers over the button. So the A colon hover just tells the computer that for the anchor tag, when a cursor hovers over it, I want these things to change. And so I'm going to have the border and text color change. Whatever lines of code you put in those curly braces will change the button when you hover over it, and then everything else that is not in there will stay the same. So now that we've styled the main page, we're going to head to the yes page, which is where the viewer will be taken when they click yes. It's going to have the same structure body-wise as the index.html file. So I'll just add my heading. Now I'm going to add an image, which I'm also going to go back to Pinterest for. So you're going to do the same thing, download that image and drag and drop it into the files and rename it.
And after I've named it, I'll just put the file name into the source, src. And because I want this image to be styled in the same way as the first one on the index file, I'm just going to give it the same class, aka cats. And with these two components, we've actually finished the yes page. And so now I'll close out the body with an ending tag. The ending tag is the same as the opening tag, just has a backslash. And you have to do the same for HTML. And so now we'll run it just to check our progress. And so now that it's run and compiled the way we want it to, we're going to go style the no page. So this page is going to have the same structure as the index.html file, with the heading and the image, but instead of two buttons, it's just going to have one redirecting them back to the main page because saying no is not an option. And so I finished typing out my heading and now I'm going to find another picture on Pinterest. We're just going to do that same process of finding the image, downloading it, and then dragging and dropping it into the files. And I'm going to give it the same class because I want it to be styled the same in terms of the width and the centering in the page. And so now we're going to make that link with the anchor tag. And inside href, we're going to put index.html to redirect them back to the main page with the text try again. I also want this button to look the same as the ones on the main page, so I'm going to give it the same class of links. Oh, okay, wait, that's not in the center, but don't worry, we'll get back to that to fix it. We've just been looking at the website on the side over here, but if you want to look at it full screen, you're going to hit that button in the corner, the box with the arrow sticking out of it, and it'll take you to the new tab. And I also want more of a fun font, something that's not already pre-installed on the computer or in Google Fonts. So I'm going to go to this website I've been using to font, and I like Oliver recently, so I'll just search that up, and I'll download it over there. When you open up that downloaded folder, you'll see that there's a TTF file inside. And TTF stands for True Type File. It tells the computer what kind of font it is. So you're just going to drag and drop that TTF file into the files, just like the images. And because fonts are a stylistic element, we'll have to import it into the CSS file. So we do that by typing it at font face, and inside the curly braces, we have the font family, which is what we want to call the font. And then we have the source. Inside that URL, we're going to put the name of the file in single quotations. Make sure you type in the file name exactly as it's written on the side. And then we're going to put in the format, which is TTF, aka true type. And now that we've imported it, we can use it anywhere in the coding workspace. Because I want all the text on the website to be Oliver, I'm just going to put it in the body tag. Putting this line of code in the body section will apply this to everything that is in the body sandwich. And now that we've run it and seen the font change, we're going to fix this try again button. I realized that in the no file, I forgot to add the class of answer buttons, so the CSS file didn't apply the formatting attributes to the try again button. So because I had the class of links, the button was styled the same way as the buttons on the main page, but because I didn't have the answer buttons, it wasn't formatted in the same way in terms of centering on the page. And so now that I've put in that div class of answer buttons, it should be formatted the same way. Oops, I accidentally put a space there. But now that I've added the class of answer buttons, everything that is in the answer button section of the CSS file will be applied to this button. Okay, yay, now it's in the center. And so now that we fixed that button, we've actually finished our website, so I'll show you how to share it. To send it off, you're going to hit that new tab button in the corner, the same box with the arrow sticking out of it, and you're just going to copy and paste that link. And with that, we have finished our website and now it's ready to be sent off. And so I hope that this was a really good introduction to you for coding. And if you like this video, you know I'm going to do it. Um, give me a like, drop a subscribe, let me know in the comments if you want more stuff like this, if you want other stuff. And I am so proud of you guys for finishing the website. Thank you for watching.